moving and things, and they, they said, we're going to stop him from moving around, so they put all these tables in here. <laughs> oh, me. If I could maybe... I can move down one. Is that right? To, to this? Yeah. Thank you. I'll stand right here. Amen. Look, I'm going to be, I'm going to be brief, brief tonight, and um, I mean that. Uh, I told you I was going to preach on the mystery of the ox and the new cart, but I, I just don't think that's appropriate tonight. The Lord's checked in my spirit, my spirit about that. But I have something really good for you. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on that one. It's a, it's a, um, it's a longer, more complicated thing that to, to get out. I don't, I don't think this is the right setting for that message. But I am going to preach tonight. And, and Jamie's going to pull these scriptures up for me because I've pulled this on him fast. Two scriptures. The first one is Joel 2.23. Pull that up, please. Joel 2.23. I'm going to give you a great thought. I'm gonna, this is my last message with you, so I'm going to leave you with a great, great thought tonight. Joel 2.23, 24, 25. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the, the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Before you change that, Jamie, say these two words with me. Former rain, latter rain. Former rain, latter rain. Remember that, verse 24. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. Next verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you now Jamie if you'll go back to uh, verse 23 because this is where we're going to take our we're going to take our message from this former rain latter rain one more verse Jamie J Jeremiah 29 11 please Verse 29, Joel, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Leave it right, leave it right there, Jamie. Father, we thank you tonight for this word. We praise you and honor you. You've been so gracious and kind to us. And, Lord, I pray that I have planted seeds in this, in this ministry and in this house the time that I've been here. Just some things that you've given me over the years, God, I pray that I've planted seed in this house. God, I know that you're going to do a stirring and change is coming to this place. It's coming. God, you're going to do a stirring in this city. You're going to do a stirring in this town. And this church is going to become a giant, God, in this town because the Spirit of God dwells in this church. And I just pray, God, that something I've said, something I've told somebody, Lord, has lifted and encouraged their heart and their spirit the four days that I've been here. In Christ's name we pray. Now bless this word tonight and let it be rich in soil, rich in vitamins, rich in minerals. Let it be rich tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. Amen. Just leave that up, Jamie, if you will. Uh, I know you, you've heard this a thousand times, but it's so true. One night in prayer at my church, and I, I prayed on Saturday nights for 15, 16, 17 years. Every Saturday night I went to my church and spent hours in prayer. Best thing I ever did in my life. You need to make some time to get alone with God. You need to do that. I want to. I want to. I want to um, um, bring a thought to you tonight. A great thought that the Lord gave me. One night while in prayer, the Lord took me to Joel two twenty three, and He showed me two words: latter rain, former rain. Okay. And then He told me something about it I did not know. The Lord said to me. Do you know I have a former rain and a latter rain? Yes, Lord, I see it. But he said to me then, but did you know this? I have a former thought and a latter thought. I have a former thought and a latter thought. 
If I have a former rain and a latter rain, I have a former thought and a latter thought. And I want to preach a little bit of this to you tonight for a few moments. Now, let me prove it to you. For I know the thought. No. For I know the thought. No. For I know the thoughts. It's plural. To more than one. For I know the thoughts, it's plural, more than one, that I think toward you, saith the Lord. And it says it again. Thoughts, not singular, but pl plural, more than one, of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. We talked about Job the other night. Job was a man that God had a thought about. Job was a mighty man of God that had everything. He was rich, he was powerful, but he was a man of God. And the devil said, let me do something to him. And God had a former thought. I'm going to let you do it. <laughs> I'm going to let you touch him. God had a former thought. I'm going to let you strip Job of everything he has. So God's former thought began to work. And the devil stripped Job because God gave him permission. Always remember, the devil cannot do anything to you God will not allow him to do. Hello? Can't do it. God let the devil strip Job. God had a former thought, I'm going to let you do it. But listen to me. God always had a latter thought waiting in Job's future. Sorry. God had a latter thought waiting in Job's future. Now that thought came 42 chapters later. But through the former thought, Job suffered. He lost everything. He fought discouragement. He, he went through a lot of stuff. But that latter thought was always out there in Job's future. If God has a former reign and a latter reign, He has a former thought and a latter thought. And some of you tonight are just walking in God's former thought. God has a latter thought for your life that you have not got. Come on. And it's out in your future, and it's just waiting on you to get there. Come on. For I know the thoughts. You ever wondered what God thinks about you? Right there it is. Huh? I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. They hung their head around Job. Oh, poor Job. Job may, I think he's going to die. I think he's not going to make it. I think it's over for Job. But all the time, God's latter thought was waiting out there for Job. And all of a sudden, the Bible said in Job chapter 42, you can stand up and clap, brother. Go ahead. It's fine. Help yourself. 42 chapters later, the Bible said that when Job prayed for his friends, the Lord turned the captivity of Job and that God gave Job twice as much as he had before. He bled because that latter thought was waiting out there on Job to get there. But if Job had quit, if Job had given up, if Job had threw in the towel, he would have never reached the latter thought. But Job said, I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not stop. No matter what the devil throws at me, I've got to get to that latter fault because when I do, my life is going to change and the blessings of God are going to come down. Let's give the Lord some praise tonight. I know the thoughts. If God has a former reign and a latter reign, he has a former thought and a latter thought. Some of you tonight are just walking in God's former thought. Your mate hasn't arrived yet. Come on. You're praying for some. They haven't arrived yet. Your job that you're praying for hasn't arrived yet. The home you're believing God for hasn't arrived yet. The ministry you're believing God for, it hasn't arrived yet. Come on. You're just in God's former thought. Hear me. But one day, and somebody said, I'm so tired of hearing one day. So sick of it. Boy, I've been there. I told this the other night at 10 or 12 years old, I'm somewhere 
somewhere that as a kid in church, I started preaching when I was 10, and this little African American lady walked up to me and she pointed her finger at me. She said, I see you in Africa, and I see you here, and I, I'm 10 years old, 12. I, I thought I was going the next day. I see you here and there. Man, I see you going everywhere. I never forgot that. Then I got stuck with the church for 17 years that God gave me. Now listen. For years and years and years, that burned inside of me. God, I want to go to the nations of the world. You said it. You promised it. I believe it. Why is it not happening? I'm now 15 years old. Then I'm 20. Then I'm 25. Then I'm 30. I sound like an auctioneer up here. Then I'm 35. Then I'm 40. You know? And I'm all these years, nothing has happened. Yes, I'm preaching. Yes, I'm pastoring. Yes, I had a lot of success at it. But that thought that God gave me was burning inside of me. That former thought was there, turning and burning and twisting and churning like you make ice cream, a homemade ice cream churner. Is that how you make it, sir? With home, yeah. It's burning and twisting and churning. Years and years and years go by, and I said, God, you promised this to me. I'm burning to go to the nations. I mean 30 And then all of a sudden, about nine years ago, God just reached over and flipped the switch. And it all changed. <laughs> this prophet called me from California nine, eight, nine years ago. A, 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 a real, real sure enough prophet. And I've never met the man at this time. He said, the Lord told me to tell you I... I see a country somewhere in South America you're going to go to. I don't. He said, the Lord didn't show me which one it was. But I see that country, and, 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 and you're going to get there through a famous preacher, the, the son of a famous preacher, and the famous preacher's dead, but the son of this guy's a nut. It's crazy. I see crazy. Whew. Jack Coe, Jr., a very close personal friend of mine. He just died about three weeks ago, 70, 70 something years old. Jack Coe preached in 50 states in America and 40 countries. He took after his dad, the world famous Jack Coe, healing, healing events of the 1940s and 50s. And he was his son. And me and him was friends. But I couldn't put to. About a week after this guy told me this, my phone rung, and guess who it was? Jack Coe Jr. He said, Joey, I've preached in your church and blah, 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 blah. I know you've already, always had a desire to go. He said, I, I, I've got a, a big meeting in Columbia. I go there all the time, but I can't make it. I'm going to Norway, he said. He preached in Norway a lot. Every, he preached everywhere. And he said, would you like to take my place? I said, yeah. <laughs> and he would only send somebody, you know, he could trust. And he knew he could do it. And I went to Columbia in 2012. First, now it wasn't my first time overseas, but the, the switch hadn't been flipped yet. I went to Columbia. I'd only been overseas a couple of times. I went to Columbia in 2012. Had a great meeting. Just a few months later, I'm in Belize preaching in Guatemala. My phone rings. It's another country. And then from now, another one, and another one. And I've now been to 19 countries in just a few short years. Uh, that latter thought, uh, that latter thought has kicked in my life. I waited on it 30 or 35 years. I'm in Australia to tell some of you tonight, you've been waiting on what God promised you, but He is not a liar. God will give you what He promised. Your latter thought is on the way. Somebody say amen. It's coming. It's coming. It's on the way. If you give up, you'll never have it. Pastor Daniel's strolling through India. In 
that former thought. God had a latter thought for Australia. He didn't even know anything about it at the time. Until God flipped the switch. He said, you're going to Australia. And now he's living in his latter thought. God's got more of them. Thoughts more than one. Job walked it out. He walked that former thought. If you're sick, keep going. If you're waiting on healing, keep going. You know, I've got, I fell in Venezuela a year and a half ago and injured my back. I've been having horrible back pain. And doggone, people come up my crusades and, and they'll say, my back's killing me. I just pray for them. They come back the next night. They say, man, I, I feel great. And I look up and say, what about me? I need something. My Lord, I'm begging you. But you got to keep walking. You got to keep going. Amen. That latter thought is waiting. 42 chapters later, Job's latter thought kicked in, and my God blessed him with twice as much as he had. To. How many could use double for your trouble tonight? Give the Lord some praise in this house. Woo! Just two, a couple more thoughts here. There was a woman in the Bible with an issue of blood. Remember her? The Bible said she um, went to doctors but only grew worse, wasn't it? God had, a, she spent everything she had. Now, I know it's not this way here, but in America, when you run out of money, you run, you've run out of a doctor. It's not that way here. We don't have the free health care system. You have to pay for everything. And they all want money. <laughs> if you ain't got it, you ain't going to see one. Or insurance, you know what I'm saying. This woman spent everything she had, the woman with the issue of blood. God had a former thought, I'm going to let her get right down to the point of death. Then I'm going to touch her. Then I'm going to heal her. For she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Is that right, Pastor? And when she did, God's latter thought kicked in. And the Bible said the blood stopped. And we know the life is in the blood. Is that right? The blood stopped and she raised up healed by the power of God. No longer was she bleeding. No longer did she need a doctor. No longer was she sick. But the master made her whole because she held on to that ladder thought got there. And my favorite one. This is, this is the last little story. My favorite one was a man that had two kids. I know a man that had two funerals. His name's Lazarus. Some, I read a post on, I'll be through in a few moments. I read a post on, uh, somebody put a post on Facebook or something and threw something at me and said, uh, you do know that Lazarus was just a fixed, fictional character. No, sir. There is absolute records on paper of a man named Lazarus that was raised from the dead and the Bible scholars know how many years he lived after he was raised from the dead. You want me to tell you? 15 years. It's documented proof in Israel and I, I'm not as smart as those people are but the rabbis know it. They've got records of that this man is a, this is a true story. They came to Jesus and they said, Lazarus whom thou lovest is sick. You know what Jesus did? He stayed four days, the Bible said, where he was at. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. This is true also. Back in those days, there was a lot of witch doctors and soothsayers that could raise people from the dead that had been dead for three days. But they had a saying amongst themselves, after four days, nobody can help them, nobody can raise them after four days but we know somebody that could. So he waited four days instead of three just to show him what he could do. God had a former thought. You know what it was? I'm going to let Lazarus die. I could go over there and heal him right now, but I'm going to let him die. I'm going to go ahead and let him die. That was God's former thought. But just as they closed the tomb on Lazarus, that latter thought slipped in between the doors. 
that that latter thought of God is slipped in, Pastor. Just as they close the door, just as they roll that stuff, it slipped in. And, it was. and when Jesus came and said, Lazarus, come forth, that latter thought tapped him on the shoulder and said, Lazarus, it's time to get up. You've been down, and here he come out with grave clothes and all. This is not a fictional story. This is not a magic fairy tale. This is not Disney World. This man actually died. Christ actually raised him from the dead, and he lived 15 years after he was raised, and the man had a second funeral. How many of you have had two funerals? anybody getting anything here God's got a former thought and a latter thought for your life I know the thoughts more than one so many people give up before their latter thought gets there they quit they give up they throw in the towel as we say in the states how do y'all say it there, throw in the towel well at least it's not a, a jumper God's got a ladder thought for you waiting. Come on. If you're praying for a mate, if you're praying for a home, if you're praying for an automobile, if you're praying for a miracle, if you're praying for something and it hasn't come yet, do not give up on that. Keep asking. God has a ladder thought. It's out there waiting on you to get there. For it tapped Lazarus on the shoulder, a man that was dead for four days and said, it's time to get up. Last thing, to give you Thoughts, thoughts of peace and not of evil. God thinks nothing evil of you. People run around, God's going to kill you. God doesn't want to kill you. He wants to love you. If God was going to kill somebody, he'd done killed most of us anyway. Let me say that again. If God was going to kill somebody, he would have already killed most because we're stubborn and hard-headed. <laughs> I know Australians are not, but Americans are. I was talking about America. Corey's not stubborn and hard-headed. And uh, Mustang back here, he's not stubborn and hard-headed. The, the, Dr. Clone, I call him, Dr. Clone. God, thoughts of peace and not of evil. God wants your home to be peaceful. God wants your life to be peaceful. Not evil. He's not an evil God. And here, here, here's, the, here's the firecracker. To give you an expected end. You know what that means? To give you an end that no one expected. Nobody expected Job to bounce back with twice as much as he had. Come on. They said Job's going to probably die. Job's going to probably give up, Pastor Daniel, before this thing's over. But see, God had a latter thought out there waiting. Former rain, latter rain. If God has a former rain, he has a latter rain. We know he does. We read it, Joel 2.23. He has a former thought and a latter thought. I'm living in God's latter thought right now. I'm going to country after country after country after country, and, and I can't even believe the places I'm going. It's amazing. I'm not trying to be boast or brag. I'm telling you, I came from a little... I'm nothing. I'm nobody. Nobody knows who I am except somebody called God. And God, when God knows you, it don't matter if they know you, God will raise you up whether anybody knows you or not. See, that's what matters. Nobody expected me to do what I'm doing. To give you an expected end. It's an end that nobody expects. Some of you, your family thought nothing of you some of you your family never saw in you what God sees some of you your family said they'll never be nothing they'll never make nothing they'll never do anything does anybody know who Garth Brooks is no I'm not a Garth Brooks I have no problem with Garth Brooks went to Nashville and they said, you can't sing. Go home. <laughs> Garth Brooks, they said, you can't sing. Go home. I'm just telling you what people see. Come on. Actors go to, uh, to, to Hollywood 
and they say, you can't act. And then they become the biggest star. I'm not trying to preach the world on you tonight. That's not what I'm doing. I'm using this as an example. God sees in you what nobody else sees. God's got an end for you that nobody expected. Nobody expected. As they stood at Lazarus' funeral, they said, Lord, if you had only been here. They wouldn't expect that man to come back, but God had an expected end for Lazarus. God had an expected end. My God, when they marched around the walls of Jericho, some of them people said, them walls ain't going to fall. Them walls ain't coming down. But God had an expected end. When, when, when uh, 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 Jonah was in the belly of the whale, God, somebody, if they'd have saw that, they'd have said, that's it. He's done. And then you want to tell me that that, that, that that story could have never happened. I know people that's got a mouth so big you could drive a dump truck through it. Don't tell me a whale cannot swallow a person. I threw that for free, Pastor. Come on. When Jesus died, I'm about to close. When Jesus died, you know what? A lot of, a lot of things they said, boy, it's over. It's done. We put him away, didn't we? We buried him. He's, he's down. He's done. We're going to stop this. It was getting out of control. People's getting healed. People's getting saved. Now, Jesus is drawing crowds. They said, we will stop this. Put him in the ground, but they wasn't expecting him to come back out. Woo! They wasn't expecting him to get up. But God had a latter thought for his son. The father had a latter thought. You're going to put my son on a cross. But in three days, that latter thought is going to take my son and raise him and he will be back. Somebody say amen. And from that little act that from, from that act of Jesus coming back this thing has went around the world for 2,000 years they've tried to stop it you can't stop it they've tried to burn it out you can't burn it out my God they've tried to put it out you can't put it out they've tried to snuff it out you can't stop this you can't put it out this is not man this is almighty God that's who this is somebody give the Lord some praise give you an expected end. Let's stand on our feet tonight, please. Chloe, come help me, please. We got her good today. We sat at the, the t food table and we said, what, what, what can you cook for this man you're going to marry? She said, well, I can, I can cook toast and I, <laughs> no, we're, we're picking on we're proud for you Chloe we're picking on you There's, there was another mic yeah we're, we're can you pick pray give her that we're, we're picking on you and the drummer the band all of you can come if you would please